Yeah, well, judging by the energy in the group, yeah, obviously disappointed with the results that we've had over the last few weeks, but, um, you know, the energy is certainly up and about and, and ready to attack this next portion of our season. It's obviously a few blokes off doing their running today. Lockie looked good today. Let's start with Lockie. Think he'll be back for sure next time. Yeah, well, he trained really strong today. He was just nipping around then, so that was encouraging. So, um, no doubt he'll have a few more hurdles that he has to overcome, but, um, yeah, hopefully he's good to go. Darcy Gard is the other one. We're also waiting to see how he looked, but he actually... Okay, so you think your scans will come back all right? Yeah, yeah I, uh, I th well, hopefully they come back all right. Um, as you said, I just spoke to him just then and um, he was pretty happy with how it was all, all moving. Um, he was obviously really disappointed that he had to go off on the weekend, but um, moving this morning, he said it felt a lot more free than what it did during the game. So that's a great sign. Hopefully the scan comes back all clear and um, he doesn't miss any footy. What about Connor McKenna as well? He's out running. running, running. <laughs> Just go through the list, eh? Yeah. Goodness me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, um, yeah, he obviously had his scan, so I think he probably missed about three games by the looks of it. But, um, yeah, he was pretty optimistic. It was very similar spot to the last bit. Certainly not as bad. So, he, um, yeah, he was running. I ran next to him for a little bit there, and he's optimistic as well. So, um, yeah, hopefully some good news on the way. But, um, yeah, see what happens. He seems to be in good spirits. How do you tackle something like that mentally? Connor? Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, it's obviously disappointing. Um, you work extremely hard in the pre-season to play and then, you know, your body lets you down when you're there. So, um, yeah, look, he's he's a pretty cool customer. I mean, it certainly won't phase him and he'll do his rehab well and be back into it before we know it. I think this, sorry, Michelle, I was going to say, I think this is the last one. I saw Charlie hobbling through the airport last week, but today he moved pretty well. So, is there any lingering issues with Charlie? Oh, Come on, Zul. Jeez. Uh, no, there isn't. Okay. Uh, I think he might have just been putting a little bit on there. Um, but, uh, yeah, he's got a bit of a swagger walk about him, Charlie, as it is, so maybe you just emphasise that a bit more. But he's all good. He's clear. Your defensive stocks, um, how much... What does Tom do today if he, you know, he might play this weekend in the VFL? Yep. How, how good would it be to have him be able to come into the side if he's right to go? Yeah, well, if, that's, a, that's, a, that's a point there, isn't it? If he's right to go, I mean, um, he's obviously a class player. He's played a number of years in Adelaide and been a real stalwart in their defence. So um, he'd obviously had a lot of experience and um, depth to our group. And, um, you know, if he plays this weekend and gets through, well, that's a decision for the coaching staff to... To, to make, but um, yeah, I, I know what he will certainly bring to our group uh, once he gets into the team. And what about Noah Answorth as yeah. well? Um, had a pretty good game on the weekend, um, and if he plays this weekend leading into Collingwood, he's another one that could be up for to be selected again. Yeah, Noz has had a really interesting journey, um, to be honest. He's, you know, he came onto the scenes as a 19 year old after his back surgery, and um, you know, he came into our team and performed so well, and then just injuries has riddled him. Um, he's had his jaw, he's had his shoulder, he's just had so many injuries, the poor bloke. but. He came out on the weekend. I thought he played really solidly um, for his first game at AFL level for a number of years. Um, you know, he's a little bit of a shining light for us. So he's naturally going to get better as the weeks go on. And um, we know exactly what he brings. He's, he's tough, he's hard, um, and he never gives up, which is a really important trait to have. So um, the more games he can get under the belt, the, the better he'll be for our team. With Connor being injured now on top of Kitty, obviously out for the season, what sort of hole do those two absentees sort of leave in your back line in terms of creativity? Uh, well, yeah, a little bit. Uh, there's no doubt about that. But um, one thing that Fags has really stressed to us over the last six years is that players need to be able to play multiple positions for this reason. And um, myself, Cam, Jared Berry at times has gone down there and played in the back line. So we're certainly not short of stocks in that department. Jimmy Madden's going really well as well. So we're certainly not short. Um, but, you know, whoever gets called upon needs to be ready to play that position and their role for the team if they get given that chance. You have been there. Would you be open to going back down there again? Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. you, you, you like do you, in that do, position? Yeah, do, do, do. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, um, yeah, I've certainly haven't hidden from the fact that I do like playing in the back line. Um, defensively at times, I probably let myself down. Um, but yeah, I certainly enjoy seeing the game from from that point of view. And you know, being a forward for so many years of my career, um, you certainly understand you know when you're in and when you're not. So it's um, yeah. I think that's an important trait to have, being able to play dual positions. And if I go back there, I go back there. If not, that's all right. I'll keep applying my trade up front. Has Fag spoken to you about that, that being a possibility for next week? Uh, not as yet. No, we won't. We probably won't touch on anything like that until later into into next week. To be honest, we'll just see how everyone pulls up. I mean, you know, obviously Connor's probably definitely going to be missing. But if Dizzy's still a chance to play, um, 
see how the boys go on the VFL on the weekend. I think that's really important that the guys who have been you know, playing in that position for a number of years get, certainly get their opportunity to, to have a go at it as well. So, um, yeah, any selection issues certainly won't be done this week. It'll all be back into next. I know Fags likes to set goals and have you guys break hoodoos. No team has won a grand final after a 0-2 start. Is that right? Can you do it? <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, yep, we certainly can. We certainly believe we can. Um, there's no doubt about that. We've seen glimpses of our absolute best over the past two weeks, but for whatever reason, we just haven't, you know, been able to, to keep that momentum going. And when teams have got a roll, we've just sort of halted that a little bit. So that's something that we've looked at. Um, we'll look at more of that today as well. This is the first day we've been at the, back at the club. So we'll look at the trends that are, are happening and we'll address them. Um, we're a team that, you know, under Fags' um, reign, we've learnt really quickly from our mistakes. And once we've identified them, we've got to work on fixing them. And um, I think this will be no different. Has there been any knock to your belief or like your confidence collectively? I know we're only two weeks in, but has that taken a hit at all? No, nah, not really. I th no, no, I don't fish. I, to be honest, I think it's more um, us just staying engaged for the full four quarters. I mean, our pre-season was really strong, and I know it's only pre-season, but that's where you build belief and confidence that you can actually get the job done. So I certainly don't think it's knocked us around too much. I think, you know, we are only two games into the season. We've got a great opportunity now to refresh, um, have a look at everything that we, you know, have done, not only the last two weeks, but in the pre-season as well. What seems to have changed, have a look at everything and um, get ready to attack this second portion of the season. <coughs> Lock, Lock. Sorry. Yeah. So Lockie said last week, you've got to be the hunter. Does it feel like teams are coming at you, you're a grand final, you're as far away from winning a flag, do you feel like the, the first couple of teams have really, they've hunted you? Well, absolutely, I mean, they've, yeah, it certainly looks that way, doesn't it? I mean, you've had, got a whole pre-season to, to sort of assess who you're going to be playing and, and then you come up with a plan to, to face them and um, I know we've certainly done that in the past for, uh, for teams, so I think it was no different for these two sides, they came prepared and, and executed perfectly and I guess for us, that's where we need to catch up again and, and become that team that are real hunters, not being the hunted. And um, you know, we've got an opportunity in a week's time, and from there we just we just keep rolling on from there. But um, as I said, I think the confidence of the group is certainly there. Um, we just need to clean up a few areas. You spoke about refreshing. I mean, obviously, you know, with a few boys injured, probably good to have that physically, but also mentally as well. Right after we got to your side, with your goal again. Yeah, def yeah, absolutely. I mean, a lot of the game is played mentally. Um, and a lot of the lapses that we're probably seeing throughout our games is, is the mental side of it. So once again, this would be a great little opportunity for us to refresh on everything, um, strip it right back, know what works for us in the past and, and get back to that. Will I watch the pot? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. What do you make of how they're going? Uh, yeah, look, very similar situation. I mean, they're the grand finalists. We wanted to beat the grand finalists when we weren't in there. You know what I mean? So teams are coming prepared to, to play um, the better sides, they aspire to be like them. We were no different to when Richmond had that really good era, Hawthorne had that really good era. We wanted to be just like them. So teams take everything they possibly can, you know, collaborate all that information and come out with a really good game plan to beat them. And it's been no different um, for Collingwood as well. They played really good glimpses of football. Um, and I've got no doubt that they've got plenty more tricks up their sleeve. And um, once they get back into the grind of it all, there'll be no worries. Do you have a take on the Olympic Stadium, no <laughs> Gabba rebuild? What, what's your thoughts? <laughs> A little bit of popcorn at the moment, isn't it? Eh? Just sit back and watch. However, uh, yeah, look, we've obviously from a club point of view, we've grown our membership significantly in the last few years. So we were a chance to reach 60,000 members this year, which is an unbelievable achievement. So um, naturally, 60 doesn't fit into 39. So I think it'd be a great opportunity that you know that we can get a new stadium. That would be great, um, no doubt about it. And as a lover of sport, I mean, you want the best showcase possible for athletes and being an athlete and understanding just what they put themselves through um, to be the absolute best. Um, you want them to feel, you know, like this could be the best games ever. So, um, yeah, we'll just wait and see how that all unfolds. But as a sports lover, you want it to be great.